Hey everyone, it's Nicole from KenHub, and in this tutorial, we'll be discussing the main muscles of the trunk. Since this is a basic tutorial, let's just take some time to define a couple of terms. And the first term that we're interested in defining is the question, what is a muscle? A muscle is a bundle of fibrous tissue that contracts to produce movement. And you can feel your muscle when you tense your bicep, for example, which is highlighted in green in this image. And you can see the muscle moving up and down. The second question we want to ask ourselves for this tutorial is what is the trunk? And the trunk is the part of the body that is not the head or the appendages. So if you look at this image of our anatomical male in the center just here, you can see that the rectangle we've highlighted is the part of the body that doesn't include the arms and the legs or the head. And that's of course the region that we're going to be looking at today. So in today's tutorial, we're going to be talking through four sets of major groups of muscles found within the trunk. Firstly, the pectoralis muscles followed by the intercostal muscles, followed by the anterior abdominal wall muscles, and finally by the posterior trunk muscles. And of course, we'll summarize them all at the end, but let's of course begin with the pectoralis muscles, which are made up of the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor muscle. Let's of course begin with the pectoralis major muscle. And as you can see, the pectoralis major muscle is a large fan-shaped muscle of the shoulder joint. And the pectoralis major muscle has three points of origin. It has a clavicular part, which has its origin on the medial half of the clavicle. It has a sternocostal part, which has its origin on the sternum and on the second to seventh costal cartilages. And the abdominal part of the pectoralis major has its origin on the anterior layer of the rectus sheath. So although this muscle has three points of origin, its fibers come together onto one insertion, and that point is at the crest of the greater tuberosity of the humerus. Because of the different courses of its muscle fibers, we can also see that the pectoralis major has a recess at its point of insertion that is open at the top in order to prevent the muscle from overstretching. And you can see this little recess outlined in dark gray over here. So the muscle is innervated by the medial and lateral pectoral nerves, C5 to T1, which are direct branches of the brachial plexus. And you can see these nerves in yellow on our right, the superior one being the medial pectoral nerve and the lower one being the lateral pectoral nerve. In terms of its function, contraction of the entire muscle results in the adduction and internal rotation of the humerus, whereas contraction of the clavicular and sternal parts of the muscle result in antiversion, which is the tilting forward of a structure or organ without bending. And you can see that action demonstrated by my arrow just here. Something else to note is that when the shoulder girdle is fixed, the pectoralis major also assists in respiration. The pectoralis minor muscle is also a fan-shaped muscle of the shoulder girdle, but as you can see, it's a lot smaller than the pectoralis major that we just looked at. And it lies posterior to the pectoralis major and has its origin on the third to fifth ribs. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and Atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full length video and master anatomy.